Hello everyone, in this video we are going to have an overview of the parameters which are mentioned on a nameplate of a 400 kV SF6 circuit breaker, which you will also find on the other high voltage and extra high voltage SF6 circuit breaker including all of these voltage levels. So to get the details you need to watch the video. In most of the countries, high voltage switchgear including circuit breakers are manufactured based on the IEC standard that is IEC 62271-100. All the parameters marked on the nameplate of high voltage circuit breaker are also as per this IEC and also as per IEC 62271-1. So let's first have a look at IEC. As per IC, these are the parameters which should be mentioned on the nameplate of high voltage circuit breaker. Some of them are mandatory and some of them are optional based on some specific condition. Parameters marked with X are mandatory as per standard. All the manufacturers who are producing circuit breakers based on this standard should mention all the parameters which are marked with X on the nameplate. But of course, some of these parameters may be skipped if it is mutually agreed between manufacturer and customer. Parameters marked with Y are based on the condition stated in the column 6. If the breaker satisfy the condition mentioned in column 6, then these parameters has to be on the nameplate. For example, rated switching impulse withstand voltage. This is only applicable for the circuit breaker which are rated above 300 kV. So for 420 kV and above circuit breaker, manufacturer should mention this parameter on the nameplate. Now parameters marked with X in bracket are totally optional, which a manufacturer can decide whether to mention them or not. So for example, a rated out of phase breaking current is completely an optional parameter. One manufacturer may include this on his nameplate and other may not. We will first have a look on the mandatory parameters and then condition based and then optional ones. So the first thing is manufacturer. Of course the name of the manufacturer. Then type designation and serial number. Type of circuit breaker and its serial number. Year of manufacture. Year in which the breaker is manufactured. Relevant standard. The standard as per the breaker is manufactured. Rated voltage. Rated voltage is the highest system voltage for which the breaker is designed. This voltage is in kilo volt RMS and refers to phase to phase voltage of three phase system. If you would like to know what is RMS value, you can watch my video on that link is in the description. Most of the time people get confused between rated voltage and normal voltage. Rated voltage is the highest voltage of a system for which the system is designed or equipment is designed. Whereas normal voltage is the normal voltage which will remain on the system normally. So in this case 420 kV is the rated voltage and 400 kV is its normal voltage. Similarly for 245 kV voltage level rated voltage is 245 kV and the normal voltage is 220 kV. For 145 kV, rated voltage is 145 and normal voltage is 132. Rated frequency. It is the power frequency on which the electricity is generated, transmitted and distributed. In some countries it is 50 Hz and in some it is 60 Hz. Rated normal current. It is the RMS value of rated current which circuit breaker can carry continuously. Or simply we can say this is the normal current of the system. It is given in ampere and these are the preferred values of rated current. So next is rated short circuit breaking current. It is the highest RMS value of short circuit current which circuit breaker is capable of breaking. It is given in kilo ampere RMS. Rated short circuit current sometimes also called as symmetrical breaking current. On some nameplates, you will find that short circuit current is given as symmetrical and asymmetrical current like here you can see. The difference is that symmetrical current is the AC component of short circuit current which is equal to rated short circuit current. 
whereas asymmetrical current is the combination of ac and dc components of short circuit current so here you can see asymmetrical current is greater than the symmetrical so 61.2 kilo ampere is the actual amount of current the circuit breaker can break rated duration of short circuit it is the time in seconds for which the circuit breaker can withstand the short circuit current as per standard it can be 3 second or 1 second rated peak withstand current or rated making current if the circuit breaker closes during the existing fault current may increase to a very high value during the first cycle and the breaker has to withstand this high current and the mechanical forces caused by this current This current is called as short circuit making current or it is also called as a rated peak withstand current. It is generally 2.5 times the rated short circuit current. It is referred in kilo ampere peak as it remains for a very short time. So if you multiply 2.5 with 50 which is the rated short circuit current you will get 125 and that's the making current. Rated short circuit power frequency withstand voltage and rated lightning impulse withstand voltage these are the highest system voltages used to check the insulation property of the equipment it can also be called as insulation levels if combined insulation levels also includes switching impulse withstand voltage which we will see shortly power frequency withstand voltage can be caused by these reasons face to earth fault load rejection ferro resonance and ferranti effect and hence breaker shall withstand power frequency voltage caused by these reasons iec has defined the level of power frequency voltages that can appear across the breaker contact so for example for 420 kv circuit breaker the power frequency voltage defined by iec is 610 kV rms Circuit breaker has to undergo power frequency withstand test in which power frequency voltage is applied to the circuit breaker for 1 minute. Lightning impulse voltage is generally generated due to lightning strokes and of course the breaker has to withstand these voltages too. For this also IC has defined the values based on the experience and system studies. For 420 kV voltage level lightning impulse voltage is defined by IC is 1425 kv peak breaker has to undergo test for this also first pole to clear factor in three phase circuit breaker arc extinguishes during current zero as in three phase ac circuit currents are out of phase by 120 degree current interruption in breaker is not simultaneous contact of one pole will open before the other two and hence the power frequency recovery voltage across the first pole to open is more than the others and this is called as first pole to clear factor it is given as times the normal system voltage so on the name plate you will find that it is mentioned as 1.3 this means first pole to open will have 1.3 times the normal system voltage across it and the pole can sustain that rated operating sequence this is one of the important parameter of the breaker it is also called as auto reclosing duty operating sequence denotes the opening and closing operation breaker is capable of performing under specified conditions as per iec 6271-1 there are two alternatives of operating sequence which here you can see on the screen where O stands for opening operation C stands for closing operation and all the T's stands for time interval between successive operation let me tell you how auto reclosing works 90% of the faults on the system are transient in nature which remain in the system for a very short time and then system goes back to normal in such cases it is beneficial to put the system live again and here the auto reclosing system comes into picture we will consider the auto reclosing duty which is mentioned on our name plate so let's say there is a fault on the system the breaker will open then it will remain open for 0.3 second after 0.3 second it will close and if the fault is cleared it will remain 
close but if the fault is still there in the system the breaker will open immediately now breaker will remain in open condition for 3 minutes after 3 minutes the breaker will close again and if the fault is cleared it will remain close but if the fault is still there then the breaker will open immediately and now breaker will remain open until it is closed manually so this is about operating sequence or auto reclosing duty rated pressure of sf6 gas this is the rated pressure of the sf6 gas in the breaker it can be mentioned in bar or mega pascals or in kilogram per square centimeter the pressure will vary manufacturer to manufacturer total weight of sf6 gas again this will vary manufacturer to manufacturer total weight of circuit breaker this indicates the total mass of the circuit breaker in kilogram rated control voltage this is the dc voltage on which closing and tripping coil works this were the mandatory parameters as per iec which you will generally find on every name plate of the high voltage sf6 circuit breakers now let's see the condition based parameters rated switching impulse withstand voltage switching surges are generally occurs above 245 kv voltage level and hence you will only find this parameter on the circuit breaker above 245 kv level it becomes important to test the breaker above 245 kv voltage level for switching surges switching surges are generally caused by energization of lines or switching of transformer etc for 400 kv voltage level switching voltage is specified as 1050 kv peak here on the name plate you can see this also a part of basic insulation level dc component of short circuit current dc component is a component of short circuit current and if it is more than 20% at the time of contact separation of circuit breaker then it has to be on the name plate which here you can see rated line charging current this is the highest amount of line charging current a circuit breaker is capable of breaking this type of current is generated because of the switching of loaded or unloaded overhead lines so for 400 kv circuit breaker iec has defined the rating equal to 600 ampere here you can see classification if the circuit breaker mechanical endurance class and electrical endurance class is different from m1 and e1 then it has to be on the name plate let me tell you what is mechanical endurance class and electrical endurance class if the breaker is of m1 class which is also called as normal mechanical endurance class then the breaker has to withstand 2000 no load operation during type test and if the breaker is of m2 class which is also called as extended mechanical endurance class then the breaker has to withstand 10000 no load operation during type test even stands for electrical endurance generally most of the breaker nowadays are of e2 class e2 class is an extended electrical endurance class which indicate that the interrupting parts of the breaker does not require maintenance during its expected operation life on the name plate if you see it is mentioned as m2 and c2 m2 class we just saw but what is c2 class let's see that breaker with class c1 indicates low probability of restrike during breaking of capacitive currents whereas c2 class breaker indicates very low probability of restrike during breaking of capacitive current yes low and very low that's the only difference between c1 and c2 class of circuit breaker so this was about the condition based parameters now let's look at what are the optional parameters rated out of phase current if the breaker is used for synchronizing two different system it may happen that the breaker has to open when the system are in synchronism procedure and the current generated during this condition is called as out of phase current this current gives the highest amount of transient recovery voltage across the circuit breaker contact and hence it is one of the critical duty to break 
generally out of phase breaking current is 25% of rated short circuit current here on the name plate you can see the out of phase current is 12.5 kilo ampere which is 25% of rated short circuit current that is 50 kilo ampere rated cable charging this is the highest amount of cable charging current a breaker is able to break cable charging current can occur while switching the unloaded cables don't get confused between line charging and cable charging both are different line charging refers to overhead line whereas cable charging refers to underground cables rated single capacitor bank breaking current this is the highest amount of a single capacitor bank current a breaker is capable of breaking switching of capacitive and inductive current is a bit difficult task for the breaker because voltage and current in capacitive and inductive circuit is not in phase with each other so this is the single capacitor bank breaking current rated back to back capacitor bank breaking current back to back capacitor bank switching is a special application and not all the breakers are intended for this while switching back to back capacitor banks inrush current is very high and hence there is a high possibility that the arc will restrike so if the breaker is made for back to back capacitor bank switching you will find rated back to back capacitor bank breaking current in ampere on the name plate so these are the optional parameters you can find on the name plate of high voltage and extra high voltage circuit breaker if you would like to read all of these parameters we just saw you can read my article on it you will get the link for this down in the description now you can identify parameters mentioned on the name plate of circuit breaker if you like the video you know what to do that's all for this video guys i'll see you in my next one but till then watching